Now, how many features should you use? Let's talk about training and data set sizes. So what do I mean by use, firstly? If I mean store, the answer is as many as you can afford. How many you're going to put through the algorithm, that's a different answer. You shouldn't expect that you're going to shove everything in your data set all at once. Now, if you have enough computing power, and you don't care how much it costs to process it all or how long that takes, then maybe you can get super lazy and try all possible subsets, but you probably don't have that kind of time and computing power. In some cases, that's going to take till the cold death of the universe. And so you're going to need to be selective about what you show to those algorithms in the first place. That's what you use the human analysts with domain knowledge for in this setting. And now we come to that really awkward part of the day where we have to talk about body shape. A data set's ideal figure. Over here, in the leftmost position, is the worst possible data set shape, which has as many as or more features than instances. So a very chubby data set. When you have that situation, you are guaranteed overfitting. Just from a matrix algebra perspective. And even when you don't have more features than instances, if you simply just have a too chubby data set, you are flirting with overfitting. How do we feel when we hear the word overfitting? Horror, terror, exactly. So this is not something we like to flirt with, right? So if you find your data set in this situation where you just have way too many columns and more than you can sustain with the number of rows, a better figure is this one. Don't be so greedy, don't try to cook with everything all at once. Slim down and only use a subset of your potential features or ingredients. Now, if you have the computing power to move it around and you have the ability to get more instances, well, more is always better as long as you can afford it, processing power-wise. But once you have this, you can now afford more features again. This is best, even though this one has the same width as the one over on the left. The point here is that the complexity of your model and the number of ingredients that you're allowed to cook with is constrained by how many examples you have. In order to make a really complex model and to use a lot of ingredients, to pay for that, you have to have a lot of data. And so, I'll, I'll mention this now, but this will come up more later. One has to be aware and sensitive of one's data privilege. If you are an organization that has a hang of a lot of data, Spotify, Google, you know, those, then you end up being able to afford some crazy, cool, complex models because you have enough data to handle it. Not everyone out there does. And so, Talking about success with things like, say, neural networks, it really applies to certain situations where you have the processing power and you have the amount of data to make it tick. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. You need certain conditions for it to be right. And the price on those things is pretty hefty in terms of how much data is required. So this is, a, this is something like an ideal figure, and you're like, okay, but what's the ratio exactly? And the statistician in me wants to be like, no, I'm not answering that because it depends and power analysis and all these fancy things. But if you kind of wanted a, an emotional take on it, my emotional reaction to your data set, because of course this, this r the, the particulars of your situation are going to determine how much width to length you require, but just my immediate gut reaction if you show me your data set. If I'm seeing that the length is less than 10 times the width, then I'm raising an eyebrow. And maybe you're fine, right, when we dig deeper, maybe it's okay. Uh, maybe a hundred wouldn't help you because of your particular situation, but just the, the kind of practitioner's lazy gut instinct is about there, about the 10 to 1. But certainly, if you're seeing that you have almost the same width as length, you're absolutely going to have a problem. Just don't. 
So don't try to cook with everything all at once. Slim down. Now, how might you think about slimming down? You might either slim down with analytics, so you have that human flashlight process where you go and look at potential ingredients and you think about what might be worth using and you <coughs> pick which ones to try cooking with, which ones to exclude. And of course, like making that vegan, gluten-free, etc. sausage, you don't know whether you picked the right set the first time. You'll probably need to come back to this in any case. Now, there's also an algorithmic way to slim down. And that is a class of methods called dimensionality reduction or feature selection. And within these, you'll hear the ICA, PCA, those types of ones, principal component analysis. That's where they sit. And what they are about, generally, all these beautiful jargons, is about taking your input features and then doing some kind of transformation and outputting fewer super features, if you will, which are not really recognizable as the originals. So if you squinted at them, you'd be like, what is this and what's going on? But maybe putting these into your recipe would make it work very nicely. And so if you see that you are dealing with a data set that um, has a bit of a width problem, then you want to make friends with methods for feature selection and dimensionality reduction. Don't end up cooking with the whole cupboard. <laughs>